So death row files for bankruptcy. Suge is now out of the picture. Right. And Suge is still running around L.A. being Suge. Right. Various altercations, right. fights. Right. There was the shooting in Miami where he got shot. Right. Then there was the One Oak situation where he got shot six times. Mm -hmm. He then approached you and asked to borrow some money. Mm -hmm. You talk about that? Yeah. Well, what he did is he came to me and said he'd been set up, he'd been shot, that he, was, he needed money because he was making a movie about death row and his life story. Okay. And I can't remember who he said the producer and stuff was. Was it uh, the guy who did Training Day? Yeah, Antoine Fuqua. Antoine Fuqua, there we go. Yeah, Antoine Fuqua was going to do this movie on Suge, and he needed some money. I told him, Suge, I don't have any money. I'm broke. He said, but, and that's where he told me the story that he had been set up when he was shot six times, that they actually had the videotape of the shooters, because he said when he went to the club, he was going in, and he had a metal detector at the door, so nobody could, could get in with weapons. Uh, I think he said, he was going to see Chris Brown. I think Chris Brown was there. And he said the videotape showed that somebody at the club opened up a back door and the shooters actually came in the back door and shot him. So he thought he had a good, a good lawsuit. Against One Oak? Against, against the club. Okay. And that it was going to settle for something in seven figures, he figured, or it would go to trial. And that would be the security to pay me back. Okay. But you didn't give any money. I didn't have any money to give him. I didn't give him any money. <laughs> and uh, he was going to give me some more information about his claim, his loss, who never got it. Okay. You weren't interested in getting that? No. Into the show no. business? No, I'm not in the show business. <laughs> so that didn't happen. And then the whole incident happened at the Straight Outta Compton film set. Yeah. Did you know that Sugar was heading down to, to do this? No, what, but uh, I'm not surprised. I think, you know, what, what he was trying to do, what, what Suge was doing is something that um, he, was, he was trying, he said, did I talk to him after that? I don't know where I got the knowledge from, but he was going to try and get money out of Trey. Right, I mean, I, I interviewed a little easy. Now, before the whole situation with, with Terry Carter and Suge, you, you were on the, the NWA set. Uh -huh. And when you met with him, he talked about the Straight Outta Compton movie and his mm -hmm. trail in it. Mm -hmm. and what, what, was, what did he say when during I, the, He wanted to get paid. He wanted, he to, wanted get to get paid. He wanted to go in there and ask for ridiculous things and in a way that he wanted, not to talk and do business and, and say, hey, you know, okay, can we talk about this and what, how, how can we go about this? Like, no, give me this. I, I, th I think I say, I th he felt that both, Dre, that both Dre and Jimmy owed him, okay. is what he felt. Um, and um, I know that uh, when he was in bankruptcy, um, he, he was getting some money from Interscope. They were paying him for security services. You know, he had a contract, he was getting, you know, something in the six figures every year from, okay. from Interscope for security services, but he felt that what Tupac had earned, what Dre had done, they owed him and they were doing this movie. So he, he, was, um, he was trying to figure out how to give money. That's the same as he'd come to talk to me about, can you give me some money for this? And I figured it was just a story. When you say, I got a movie and I need money, I said, well, you know, you're with Antoine Fuqua. Somebody's gonna finance the picture. Okay. You know, what you're saying, that did not compute. Um, and uh, so he went out to the movie set. The guy he ran over was one of his best friends. Right, Terry. Mm -hmm. um, so I legitimately think Suge was scared. That's, you know, and um, I think when he was rushing to get out of there, he was rushing to get out of there because he was frightened. And that's how he happened to run over his friend. I don't think it was an intentional act on his part at all. Well, you said that if, if Suge was a white music executive and you look at this whole situation, shows up at this location, some guy beats him up, he tries to get away, ends up running over the guy and killing his friend, 
and the white executive said that's self-defense, everyone would have believed him. But with Suge, they set like, what, a $25 million bail initially. Yeah. He's charged with, what, first degree murder. Yeah. Um, he's still in prison. Yeah. Um, and this trial is, is still not underway. I mean, you, you know, what, what, what's happened with Suge is he contributed to a narrative of who he is yeah. that made him a public enemy, though if you were to deconstruct what he actually has done, it's not necessarily the case. I think, you know, uh, his fall from being really rich, I mean, he made a, he made a lot of money, you know, in, in the lawsuit that, that Dick had against him. Um, I looked at some of the discovery. I mean, I, it, in, in one city, I was there with the lawyers who were handling it. went through probably uh, in excess of $80 million in checks had been written to him over a less than a three-year period of time. Wow. So, so there's a lot of cash that flowed through. So to go from that, like, like nobody wants to go backwards, you know. So you have cash, you have cars, you have houses, you have, you have all these things to lose it. And then, you know, I think he was in a scramble to get it. But, but the criminal acts that he did, he shot at somebody in the studio to make a, to, to kind of make a, to create an example. I'm scaring you to stop you from using the phone. That led to, you know, being on probation for years. Then he's in the casino and he kicks somebody that leads to him getting a nine-year jail sentence. And so I don't think, the shots in the studio were really that big a deal. It certainly wasn't something that would, should lead to six years in probation or, or six years of probation or nine years in prison. Um, that's, you know, that's what happened there. And so, but you have a narrative. It's a, it's a mogul of gangster rap. He's done all these things. And now he kills somebody. And the evidence is I understood it in, in the, the thing is somebody actually came to the pickup to try and start fighting him one of the bodyguards at the set. Yeah. And so having been shot six times, I think he's afraid he's gonna be shot and, and maybe he wouldn't have, maybe his nine lives are over. And he said, let me get the hell out of here right. without thinking. And then after Bone got run over by Suge, yeah. he hands something to an associate, which they say it was a walkie-talkie, but I don't think it was a walkie-talkie. No, I'm sure it wasn't. Yeah, it seemed like it was a gun. Yeah, probably was. Um, have you been talking to Shug while he's been in prison? I have not. You no, haven't? No. Do you have any idea why he switched lawyers so many times? Because David Kenner is no longer his lawyer. Probably failure to pay <laughs> would be my guess. Shug, I guess the judge lowered it to like, originally it was $25 million, the judge lowered it to $10 million. So to get out, Shug would need a million dollars. And right. after making tens of millions of dollars, Shug cannot come up with one million dollars to get himself out of the worst situation in the world right now. Well, the, yeah, I don't know if it's the worst situation in the world to him or not. Well, he's in prison. He's in yeah, a, but he's, he's been a, there before, you know. It's well, a bad situation regardless. No one wants to be in a cage. Maybe. Maybe? Yeah, maybe. You know, you know um, nobody likes to be locked up if you can avoid it. But the flip side of the coin is that at least like when, when she was in jail out of Lompoc, you know, if you're, if you're the right kind of celebrity in jail, uh, it ain't as bad as it seems to us who are free. You know, you know I, I've had a lot of people who, who you know, relatives and others who, who've gone to jail. Um, and while you are locked up, you know, look, here's a guy who's out. If he's got a million dollars and you pay it to get out, you don't get it back. Right. So if he's got a million dollars, he might well want to say, you know what? I, I can live here in jail. I've been here before. Um, and it's no worse than maybe my being on the streets out trying to hustle. So, hey, I'm getting regular meals. I get to exercise. Nobody's messing with me. I'm a celebrity. I can do as many things as I want to do. Like when he was in Lompoc, he was not unhappy being there. Um, so Suge actually likes jail to I a certain degree. I don't think he likes jail, but you know you adapt to it. You adapt and, to and, it, and it also helps build the credibility. You know, if you're a wannabe, look, I've been in jail. I can do this. I'm okay. a tough guy. Well, Suge has two strikes already. Mm -hmm. If he gets convicted for a felony, 
and he's got, like, I believe, four different charges in this particular incident. Yeah. He's doing 30 to life. Mm -hmm. For a man his age, it, it equates to life. Right. He would die in jail. He's going to die in jail. Right. If he gets convicted. If he gets convicted. You personally feel that he's going to get off. I think he's got shot. He's got shot. Know. I mean, you know, like, I don't know who his lawyer would be, but, um, you know, in a trial, his prior behavior is not evidence for the jury. It's not? No. At all? At all. Because you're judged on the crime you're being tried for, not on things you've done in the past. Okay, so. You, so in a. So you can't put evidence on that you've been to jail, that you're a prisoner, or that you've been convicted of assault and stuff. And so a lot of what you would do in the trial is to try and find a jury who does not know anything about your history. Okay. And then they got to look at just the narrow confines of the trial for which, or the charges and the events around that. So, so you mean to tell me if someone has a history of violence right. and they're in a violent crime, you cannot show this history of violence? No. Really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Because, because you're not being tried for what you've done in the past. Okay. You're being tried for what you did in this instance. Um, okay, so unless it relates to this instance, unless it has it relates to the, nothing to do with it. It has okay. nothing to do with it. It's, it's got irrelevant. It. Got it. You know, so... If, if, he, if he comes in and he has a credible explanation for why he reacted the way he did, he said, hey, you know, I just got shot six times by somebody who's unknown. I see this guy, I think he was one of the shooters. He comes up and looks like he's getting ready to hit me. I figure I better get the hell out of there. That's what I did. And I put on evidence the guy that I killed happened to be one of my best friends. I certainly would not have wanted to kill him. You know, if anybody's going to be killed, I was really just trying to escape. And what I did was a matter of self-defense and preservation. I mean, you got a, a jury has to believe beyond a reasonable doubt that that ain't true. Right. Um, and so, uh, you know, if Suge puts on a suit and a tie and he comes to court and he talks about, you know, uh, he was a college graduate. He you know, da 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 da. You know, middle class people don't go to jail. You know, rich people definitely don't go to jail because the typical juror doesn't believe that somebody that's rich, especially if you're white, that you could really be some kind of criminal. So, so the there's going to be a presumption usually in your favor, especially in a case where it's like you drove over somebody as opposed to shooting them, something like that. Yeah. Um, and so if I was trying the case, you know, my, my summation to the jury would be, now imagine, you know, all of us, you're, you're, a, you're a human being. If you're in a dangerous neighborhood and you thought somebody was, was maybe going to accost you, this would really work for a white juror. You're, you're deep in the heart of comp and you're in gang territory and some gang banger looks like he's coming at you and you see something in his waistband. Do you sit there and talk to him or do you try and get away? Well, and you just got beat up by one of them. Just, just got beat up and shot by one of them? Well, no, you just got beat up right there in the parking yeah. lot because it's yeah. bone and That's right. Yeah, beating and him so, up. And so what would you do? You know, and what this case is all about is was it intentional or was he trying to flee to, to protect his life? What would you do? And when you go in that jury room, I don't want you to think about anything other than what you would do. That's why we have a jury of peers, people who live like us, who are from the community that we're in. How would you react, and do you think you should be convicted of first-degree murder for trying to save your life and get away? But even if Sugar's convicted for manslaughter, he's still going to end up going to prison for life. Maybe. You, you know, I, there, there's, a, there's a real move afoot to try and do away with that three strikes law. Yeah. You know, and give judges more discrimination. I mean, you know, more discretion over how they do the sentencing. And you haven't talked to Shug this whole time. I haven't. I haven't talked to him since before the incident. Since before the incident. Yeah. Well, we'll see what happens. Yeah, we'll be, it'd be interesting we to see. Uh, I think the trial is set for some time in 2017. Yeah. Be interesting to you know. Um, it'll be interesting to see. I mean, I, like I said, I don't think, I don't think that Shug. Um, is afraid of being in jail. Um, and a lot of times, you know, you delay and you delay, you delay because it takes some of the 
of the vitriol out of out of a case, um, and it becomes something that happened a long time ago. And, you know, yeah. it's not a current event. People don't know about it, and you're able to, you know, from a defense standpoint, um, you're able to find a jury that know anything about it. Um, and have formed opinions about it, nobody's talked about it, becomes an easier case to beat. Well, regardless of how this case ends, whether Suge is found innocent or guilty, right. death row made $750 million. Mm -hmm. And regardless of how Suge walks away from this, this was, I think your own words, a, a mighty fall. Mighty fall. It's this mighty is... Fall. Would you say this is one of the greatest falls in, in music history? Uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's probably one of the, the greatest falls of, of somebody or a company that I'm familiar with. Yeah. You know, um, and um, of, of, a, of an executive who went from, you know, being really a, a mogul and one of the one of the best known figures in 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 our culture and pop culture, you know, which which makes it uh, tragic. Yeah. yeah. Well, we'll see how it ends up. Yeah. Virgil, thank you for your time. You're welcome. An incredible story. You're welcome.